the thingamabob that does the job is Nella Lithamasa Evergreen. Hi everyone, I'm Jacob, I'm the Cow Hat Librarian, and I'm here tonight to talk about Aliana, Girl of Dragons by the very, very talented Julie Abe. I picked this up on a whim. I absolutely loved her previous books, Ava Evergreen's Semi-Magical Witch and Ava Evergreen and the Cursed Witch. And so I decided to give this one a try. And I am thrilled that I did. Now, above and beyond the qualities of this book, which I'll talk about in a moment, it's also a surprise prequel to Ava Evergreen. It takes place probably 30-ish years before the first Ava Evergreen book, and a few characters from that one are introduced in this one, and I had no idea until I picked it up and started reading. I was at a bit of a loss. I fully expected that for something this big, that the author would have trumpeted it to the sky, that the publisher would have made everyone well aware that this was a prequel to Ava Evergreen. And yet they didn't. And I'm a little bit baffled as to why. My only guess is that maybe they're hoping to set this separate timeline up as its own thing, so that in theory they could have the two different series in the same world, in the same timeline, but proceeding separately. And who knows, maybe that'll happen. So as the story starts, Aliana is an orphan. She lives with her stepmom, her stepbrother, and her stepsister, who all basically treat her horribly. She's in debt to them for everything they've used to raise her and take care of her after her father died. You see, they live in a village on the edge of the abyss, this giant chasm that leads to untold depths, where there are monsters and treasure and that attracts adventurers. The Witch Council of the Realm has a magical barrier set up that prevents the worst of these monsters from coming through. But still, it attracts enough brave and foolhardy people for the chance at treasure and glory. Well, Eliana's dad wasn't one of those adventurers. He ran an inn hoping to support them on their way into the abyss and then back again. And he made careful trips in there to collect herbs and such, which he documented in a book. Well, one trip he headed in there looking for Eliana. He thought she was in there and he never made it out. And so she's raised by her mean stepmother. And the only people in the world who care about Eliana are her friend Isao, who is learning how to be a baker and would like to also escape this town and go become a proper baker's apprentice elsewhere. And her step-grandmother, Grandmother Mari. She's Eliana's stepmother's mom, and she's more or less confined to the attic of the house where she works on beautiful tapestries and handles the mending for the inn to help them make extra money. So, Aliana doesn't have a lot of hope in her life. There's not a lot of great stuff going on. Well, one day she's exploring and gathering herbs near the edge of the abyss when she comes across something. It turns out to be a baby night dragon. It was small enough to make it through a small gap in the magical shield around the abyss, and she promises to take care of it and keep it hidden, provided that it stays hidden from other humans. And they eventually become friends. She names it Cabo, and it stays sort of close as she grows up. She also makes an unexpected other ally. One day while feeding the chickens, Eliana is approached by a novice witch named Nebalithmus. That's right, Eva's mom is a novice. She's far from the Grandmaster Witch she would later become in the Ava Evergreen books. She's just a talented novice, and she becomes friends with Eliana. 
and encourages her and asks for her help in maintaining the shield and finding its weak points and dealing with the monsters that slip through it. So Eliana helps her with these things and helps keep the realm safe while she's being treated horribly by her stepmother, who doesn't realize any of this is happening under her nose. Well, a couple other things are happening too, though. Grandmother Mary has encouraged Eliana and promised she would write her a letter for her to read when Grandmother Mary was gone. She's getting very old, of course. And Eliana's also waiting. She's waiting for the farmland's ball, because at the ball, they'll have a royal advisor there giving tests for people to enter the Royal Academy, where they can be trained to become royal advisors or princesses of the realm who take on responsibility for a particular area of the realm and may become queen someday. And it's, it's Ariana's greatest dream to do this, of course. Well, Grandmother Mary does die, and the letter she leaves is something unexpected to Eliana because it suggests that her grandmother wanted her to stay and look after her family. When this runs a little bit contrary to the other things they've discussed in the past. Still, Eliana agrees to the spirit of the letter and she sticks around. Well, sometime later, a royal advisor comes to remind everyone that every child of age should be coming to the farmland's ball to take the task to enter the Royal Academy. And the condition is that they have to present themselves at the ball in appropriate dress. Now, Eliana's stepmother thinks this isn't a problem. She doesn't own any nice clothes. She hasn't been given anything nice. There's no way she can make it to the ball. And on top of that, she's giving her a bunch of extra work, so Eliana won't have a chance to do anything. Well, in the course of things, she does, in fact, manage the gown. And now Lilithmus shows up to fly Eliana to the ball so she can present herself and have a chance to enter the Royal Academy until the ball is attacked. A night dragon, a much bigger, more dangerous one, attacks. And Eliana has to make a hard decision. It was great. It was compelling. The characters were very, very fun. This book leaned harder into the, the um, Japanese origins of the characters. There's many references to different foods and cultural norms that imply that this area of the world is intended to be a rough equivalent to Japan in our world, which I didn't get from the first Ava Evergreen book. Now, to be fair, that could definitely be my cultural bias showing, as well as my belief that the first Ava Evergreen book felt a lot like fan fiction of Kiki's Delivery Service, which had a more European feel to me. But it was it was marvelous. It was a blast seeing Nella Lithimus as a young witch and seeing the early days of her relationship with Hayato and knowing how they turn out. It was wonderful. I, I highly recommend it. If you liked the other Ava Evergreen books, you'll love this. If you liked things like Kiki's Delivery Service, you'll love this. If you liked Princess Academy by Shannon Hale, I'd recommend this. Go borrow it. You'll like it. Now, with that said, there are spoilers ahead, and I have to talk about the deal breaker. The deal breaker for this one is simple. This book is Cinderella, and it doesn't even pretend not to be. It leans so hard into the basic Cinderella fairy tale. She's, Eliana is oppressed by her stepfamily. Her dad died under mysterious circumstances. There's a ball she has to go to. She has a magical friend who shows up, who takes her to the ball. And it, it's done well. I enjoyed it. I recommend it. But it's Cinderella. And it, 
it doesn't have any pretensions of being anything else. Still, it was fantastic. And while it wasn't entirely unexpected, I enjoyed Eliana's choice to defend the realm at the cost of her chance to get into the Royal Academy. It, it felt like a very real decision and that she knew the consequences of and knew she would hate herself in the morning for, but made the decision anyway. The reveal at the end of the book that she was going to get to, Royal, get to go to Royal Academy and escape her stepfamily wasn't a surprise either, but it, it was well written. It was fantastic seeing everything with Noah Lithimus and I just, I can't recommend it enough. You'll enjoy it. Go borrow it from your local library. And on that note, if you use and appreciate the services offered by your local public library, I highly recommend taking just a minute and telling the powers that be exactly that. Go talk to a city council member. Go talk to your mayor. Go talk to your MLA and tell them that you appreciate your local public library. We're at a time when many public libraries are having trouble finding sustainable funding for the materials, programs, and services they'd like to offer, and a few good words in the right ears might make a world of difference. If, by some chance, you're a library staff member, don't forget, watching my videos counts as professional development time. With that, thanks for watching, thanks for listening to me gush about this absolutely wonderful book. By all means, please like, please subscribe, and please check back to see what else I have to talk about from the Cowhat Library. Thank you. Bye now.